Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines coming to you from the West Coast. Josh Lander joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a few more game fives here for you guys on Wednesday night. Starting in the Eastern Conference, we've got the Bucks headed back to Boston uh, where the Seas will be uh, potentially without Rob Williams. Make sure you can see who's coming in and out of those lineups all the way up until game time. Uh, also want to throw out there, Nate is does have his great stuff up on playpicks.com. Uh, make sure to get on those best bets and player props that he has for you, as well as like and subscribe to that page. We are bringing you each and every playoff game with a game video and then also those player props that we love to bring you. Uh, and then, as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for tonight. Nate, let's jump into it. Yeah, the Celtics came back with a vengeance there in the fourth quarter. Now they're minus five and a half as we go to game five back in Boston. Total is up two points to 214.5 after the Bucks had their first over of the entire playoffs. Uh, I think that total will hinge a lot on the status of Rob Williams. I think if he's out again, you got to like the over again um, as Boston has finally figured out some things offensively against the Bucks, and Giannis will not be stopped. So then we have the Western Conference game, five, uh, Golden State minus four as they go to Memphis trying to close out the Grizz. John Morant seems not expected to play, like you said, with the knee. That total's dropped a couple points since people are kind of smelling that in the wind that Miranda's not playing, and the spread has risen a little bit as well, despite the fact that Golden State did not lead until the last very last minute of that game, uh, did not look in control at all without Morant. But first, yeah, we got to look at this this incredible series here between the the Bucks and Celtics. I don't understand why the Warriors are actually the future's favorite still, uh, plus 185 at FanDuel. Went the way they've looked, uh, and the winner of this series, as I'm not the only person to say, will probably go to the finals and probably win the championship. And they just fluctuate. The Celtics were pl- were plus 700, Bucks were plus 400 before that win. Now it's just flipped. So honestly, if you want to get money down on either of those teams to win the title, now is the time here on Game Five as it hinges. The spread is in a very competitive spot. Uh, I don't know if we're if I don't really love it either way because Boston, they really just run away in these last two fourth quarters. I know they didn't get the win in the previous one, but they erased a 13 point deficit uh, looked like the far superior team when it came down to clutch time. Now here's the last two fourth quarters for Boston, 167 offensive rating with a 56 net rating that that is a, a 72 defensive rating in clutch time specifically. So the last, the last five minutes of those fourth quarters and out rebounding the, the bucks in that by, with a 62% rebound rate. Giannis in that last fourth quarter, six points, two turnovers, four fouls in the fourth quarter. Uh, so that, I mean, if, if, if there's a different officiating crew, again, I'll say it again, that's going to call his offensive fouls more often. He, they're going to be in trouble. Um, I mean, and and it was weird that he just kind of lost the aggression because he did get called for a couple of those. Maybe it was weird to see Giannis just get the ball and not go downhill down the stretch um, as if he didn't have the confidence that that was going to work out. And then the Bucks offense just completely stagnated. Uh, they scored 28 points. Al Horford and Jason Tatum scored 28 in that final frame. Boston scored 43 on 16 for 29 field goal shooting, which I did not even think was possible as they again erased a double digit deficit and somehow just ran away with that game is why you, I have a little reluctance to bet bucks plus five, but I do like the plus plus one seventy odds for the Celtics to win by single digits here. I think it'll be right around the spread. Um, if they do pull out the win, I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think they're going to blow the bucks out of the building, or even if they do, like we saw in game two, that, that might not be sustainable because they're so reliant on the three ball right now. So, I mean, the bucks can come storming back. They still have, in 18 points per game advantage in the paint, seven points per game on fast break points. Their three point shooting has got to go up. They're shooting 26 and a half percent the last three. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to bet the Bucks to win. I don't think they deserve to win. And the only thing better mm-hmm. I said that to watch <laughs> your team uh, pull off a miraculous comeback is having a sense of justice after Giannis has been smacking people in the face on his way to the drive, and then he gets slammed down by old man Horford, and this exact same thing happens. 
But the Bucks are not, yeah, they're not playing team basketball down the stretch. They don't have a scheme uh, of much sorts. It's Giannis with a 43% usage rate and Drew Holiday with a 30% usage rate. That is over the last three games, not just this last game. Uh, and it bites them down the stretch. They haven't the worst assist to turnover ratio or the worst assist rate of any team still playing and the worst assist to turnover ratio as well. 1.51. Uh, and, and so they're, they're just not, they're not going to be reliable in terms of what do you do when it's clutch time, when you're allowed to body up on, on Giannis and not necessarily get whistled for those little tic tac fouls. Um, and he's not as confident going right to the rim. And, and I mean, the biggest thing is was not Al Horford, which was just kind of found money for the Celtics with Jalen Brown in foul trouble. Uh, he he obviously came up big, but the biggest thing was Tatum finally figuring out how he wants to get by Wes Matthews. I mean, from the jump, being aggressive, dunking dunking over Brook Lopez, still had his struggles at points in that game. But as Josh called out, um, he did get to his thirty eventually, and he did it at the exact right time. You could see him kind of exasperated, like I know I can hit these shots. Uh, I just have to concentrate. And yeah, once he got into that rhythm and was hitting that sidestep three, that has become his patent basically uh, night, night, because then you have to react to everything the Celtics are doing. And and then they're getting quality looks all over the floor. We saw what happened in game two when they, when they moved it enough to get quality looks from three. And there could be a barrage of threes against this Bucks team that, that really sinks them at some point in the game allows the Celtics to pull away. All fair points. Uh, all good points. I also think you at times there's a couple of things you're saying that I'm like, you really want that to happen, Nate. Will it happen? We'll see. But no, I think at the same time, just to give you a little shit, but but I, at the same time, I think the thing with Tatum to dive into that a little further, um, just to, to continue that point that you ended on. And, and I, I thank you for that, because I was going to tout myself before I did that by saying, look, I believe that this dude turned a corner. And so I thought the odds on him scoring over 28 points in that game were better than they were not because I I thought he was going to come with this type of performance. I didn't realize he was going to save 18 of those points for the fourth quarter and play like dog crap up up until that point. And dog crap is is definitely uh, um, harsh, but be more specific in the third quarter. The thing to talk about here is when he's driving to the lane and he's not settling for those sidestep threes. He started to hit a few of them in the fourth quarter, but only 16% of his field goal attempts in the fourth quarter where he had all those points were from three 50, uh, excuse me, 67. So two thirds of his points came from the paint points in the paint uh, and then only eight from the free throw line, but he was hitting everything in the paint and he was driving on West Matthews to your point rather than settling. And and that was everything because in the third quarter, th- one third of his shots uh, were from three uh, and he only managed to score, uh, I believe, what was it? 40% of his points from the paint. So my, it, there, there's a direct correlation here, in my opinion, which is what we were talking about beforehand, which is West Matthews is going to be guarding you. And by the way, a good indication that he was scoring in the paint is that a number of those points came on Brooke Lopez when he was driving into the paint at that point after getting a screen and, now having a switch with Brook Lopez one on one and still finishing on some nice pull ups, finding ways to score outside of just relying on that three, which is in my my estimation has always been his biggest problem is that he's settling for stuff when he is six foot ten and ha- and, and now that he's stronger has the ability to get to the rim. So I say all this to say he's coming back home and he actually is a bit better at home. Now in this series, it's been split. Uh, essentially he's, he's had a bad game and a good game each at home and on the road, but when they needed it, right. When they needed him to come through in, in game two and in game four. Now in this one, we're coming back to Boston. I think five and a half is too much. You, you're saying that you would prefer the one to 10 for Boston. I still like that because it's better than the money line is I don't think that, that, that a, another, you know, a blowout is in order for them, but you know, <clears throat> I can still say I, I do I do see Giannis getting his to a degree, um, but he's not getting the calls in Milwaukee the way that he was. So I'm loath to take a, a, another over here the way that you definitely nailed it in, in the last game. Um, I, I'm a little bit more scared of that because the free throw attempts for Giannis go down by almost five uh, per game in the playoffs when he's at, on the road versus when he's at home. We're talking about 14 free throw attempts at home versus nine uh, on the road in the playoffs. That's not a coincidence, right? And then, uh, you know, you, you continue down the line with Giannis. He's actually scoring eight more points a game at home 
direct correlation of five more free throw attempts for sure. Uh, and then uh, with the way that other things sort of open up for him, probably a lack of uh, offensive foul calls uh, at home as well, though he did have two in that last game. So for the reason I, I'm, I'm honing in on these two guys is for, especially for the Bucks right now, as Giannis goes, so go the Bucks. And you can say that's oversimplifying it and that's always been the case, but it's just magnified when you don't have Chris Middleton and God bless Drew Holiday, who I will always r- remind everyone is one of my favorite NBA players of all time. Um, he can't shoot the ball 30 times a game and be their best perimeter defender all over the place outside of Wes guarding, you know, uh, uh, guarding Jason Tatum the whole time and being inside of his shirt. You still got, you know, uh, Drew Holiday responsible for the rest of, of, of the perimeter, essentially, and even, you know, banging down low a bit as he is a super strong point guard. So, uh, you know, I, I say all that to say, once again, I think that his, you know, 16 points that he had in this last game where he's five for 22, if he's going to, con- he's going to continue to shoot the ball 20 plus times, you can probably rely on some props for him. But I, I also think that that level of shooting for him, is going to create a lot more rebound opportunities. It's going to create a lot more uh, of a slower, choppier game. And, and I don't like uh, betting an over in this, in this game five here. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I didn't even mention the total in my opener there because it's it sure. is kind of unpredictable, and because the Bucks, aside from the fact that the Bucks are nine and one to the under in these playoffs, and they were twenty, you know, basically twenty and nine to the under coming into this series, their last their last two playoffs. Um, Brooke Lopez playing excellent defense, and yep. he's one of the top props I like here at eleven and a half points. Uh, the Celtics overreacting a lot to those guys who have the monster usage rate. And that was basically how the Bucks got their points in down the stretch was just dumping it down to look Brolo. who's also a monster, a menace on the glass, <clears throat> but it's those other two guys who you said, yeah, they're not built to do that on both ends and then they can't close. It's just fatigue. It just, it just seems yeah. very obvious at this point that, yeah, you can't ask your two guys to do everything and then close the game and the intensity that Milwaukee's coming out with in the first couple quarters, it, it's, it's baffling the, the Celtics a little bit. It's getting them off their game. They're, they're getting angry with the officials. They, they lost focus. Um, they were unable to pull off the comeback in game three because of that to an extent. Uh, but eventually as the game wears along, uh, the Celtics seem to get stronger. And this is the exact same thing we saw in the Nets series. It's not just strictly depth. It's just the way they settle into the game because, you know, they they play superior team basketball. And that's what the thing is. Like, if this was a six-quarter game, like, the Celtics are going to win by double digits. That's just how it goes. Eventually, you can adjust yeah, to one guy going downhill at you constantly rather than adjusting to a team that plays together. Uh, and, and that's why I think you you look at the Celtics pulling away again at some point um, and, and – but I, I I think that there's another great bet here in terms of the Bucks leading at least for one of the quarters early, and neither team leading wire to wire at just minus one thirty at FanDuel. I don't think there's any real chance that the Celtics lead just come out on fire and, and lead this game throughout. Um, Giannis is too tough, and uh, yeah, they 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 still are controlling the glass, controlling the paint, and eventually, it, you know, it it really depends on how well Boston shoots from three, but. They're shooting 41% in the series from three-point range. So that's definitely good enough to win this series if you can maintain that. And you you expect their shooting to be much closer to the explosion in game two than it was in game one at home. Uh, they do shoot better from three at home, uh, as everyone basically does in the playoffs. Yeah. <clears throat> Agreed there. I'm actually going to finish things off by saying shame on us for spending, you know, almost now 14 minutes or so on this podcast and not even talking about Al Horford, who followed up one of, if not his best playoff game ever with at 22 and 16 points in game three with a 30 point performance. Oh, he'll be back in the props video. Don't you worry. I assure you he will. I'm just going to take one second to talk about my favorite one with him. I know we'll talk about a bunch. It's only a 13 and a half points for him. Love that. Um, which he's, I mean, he's only had that in his last uh, two. He failed to score 13 in the first two. But I will say in the first one, on 12 points on four made threes. If he gets three made threes in this one, his three-point prop on DK is uh, plus 140 for him to hit more than two and a half. I'm going to go ahead and hit that as we uh, take a break between videos here in a second uh, so that I can make sure uh, that, I, that I get that. Because even if he doesn't get the 13 and a half points, I still think he can get nine for sure. And I think they would all come off threes. He's shooting about seven threes a game 
team in this series. Uh, I like him to make half of them because they're all wide open. And, and uh, we, we love Papa Al. We should have mentioned how great he's played earlier, by the way. And the last bet, yeah, I got to mention is, again, Giannis to be the top scorer is only minus 115. It started at dead even money for this last game, and it's just such an obvious bet. Um, I mean, he's, his, the usage rate is monstrous. He's going to score probably 30, 35. And I don't know if any Celtic is going to match that total. 